If you live underground, you gotta get used to. When there's no electricity, the lights go off. There can be pitch black. You can't even see a millimeter in front of your eyes. So if you're claustrophobic, there's no way you can stay there. In the heart of the Australian outback, the little isolated town of Kuba Pedi has developed thanks to the exploitation of its mineral wealth. Generations of adventurers came here to try their luck at digging, despite a very uncertain future and tough, dangerous work. Because working in the desert means it soon becomes hard to breathe when temperatures reach 50 centigrade during the summer. The heat, however, doesn't stop Jimmy, 73 years old a figurehead of this small community. They call me Jimmy the Runner, if you have pity, just because uh, I've, been, I've been doing many marathons up here. I left Greece when I was 18 years of age. I came to Australia in Cuba P to join my uh, brother for the opal mining. And I got stuck here forever and ever. <laughs> for many years, many times I got broke. That means uh, no luck. So I could get some money, go mining, doing other things, like make houses underground for explosives for other people, making holes for other people because they look a little bit dangerous, so they hired me to lose my life, not their life. And uh, even the opal industry, I was involved. But now, last uh, few years now, of course, I'm doing uh, touring, my tour guide. I love uh, living in Cuba Pity. So every morning we'll have my uh, great coffee and have a look straight the window and see the sun rising with beautiful colors. When looking at Kuba Pedi from the sky, only some of the accommodations are visible. Most of the local life happens underground and it has been so since the first pioneers arrived in the early 20th century. This is a a little home has been built by, uh, been excavated, I should say, then built, by explosives. That's where the miners, they used to come, to that, they didn't think they were gonna stay over their life here, so it's just a simple uh, shelter. So we keep them uh, warm in the winter time and cool in the summer time. They didn't make it too high because they, more high, they do more physical work to be done, so it was good enough for the time being. <laughs> The electricity came 1972, 73. Before that, we used kerosene fridges, and many times we had carbide lamps. It is for mining, also they used the, the underground hills. A bit smelly, but okay. Even myself, I, I used to do them. Water, probably to have a shower, <laughs> you know, splash this, that, that's what it was. <laughs> Not enough water, as a matter of fact. If rain, we'll have water. No rain, no water. This is a modern house. That's where everybody lives in a underground houses like this. A big lounge, facilities, couches, the television, the lights, chandelier, everything. Good friends of mine, they're living here, and they have, feel very comfortable in this underground house. This is a kitchen area. There's a fridge, the stove, and the sink, and uh, the ventilation goes up. The pipes are sticking out for fresh air coming down. This is one of the bedrooms from underground houses. Very comfortable, uh, very quiet, silence. You can sleep as much as you want to. Sometimes you oversleep because no noise, no sound. 
If you live underground, you gotta get used to. When there's no electricity, the lights go off. They can be pitch black. You can't even see a millimeter in front of your eyes. So if you're claustrophobic, there's no way you can stay there. Many people prefer living in these caves in Kuba Pedi. A four-room cave dwelling is the same price as a regular house, but demands less energy because the stone maintains a temperature of 22 degrees. Spirituality is very important for this small community of miners coming from all over the world, and it is underground that they gather every Sunday. This church has been done by volunteers. Not only uh, Serbs, actually, the Serbian Orthodox Church, but uh, some other volunteers chipped in. Of course, the fuel had to pay, and people paid for the fuel here and there. Some other people helping, chipped in to make this beautiful project underground. Well, this church has been excavated with two different tunnel machines. The ceiling has been excavated by around tunnel machines. They are doing round tunnels. This one, they made five cuts, one right in the middle, reverse, cut the round tunnel in half, reverse, cut the other half, so he made five cuts, creating very strong ceiling. It's not flat to worry about maybe a piece fall down or a big piece. Well, we look in here, it is, uh, the wall there, it is sandstone, it is, natural color this, but a lot of yellow in this church as you can see everywhere. That it is sandstone. It's not a hard rock. If you get a pick and whack it, you're gonna break it. This debris became from that inland ocean as this was in the water. That water was covering one third of the Australian continent at the time. Some people brought that debris over millions of years. When you dig down and do tunnels you'll see different colors as you see a lot of yellow, lots of yellow here. Anybody can come to this church. It doesn't matter what religion they are. They're welcome for everyone. The local shops are also built underground in Kuba Pedi. Shops, bars and restaurants, the locals come here to find some fresh air and relax. I had a good life uh, here in Cuba Pedi. I've raised uh, four daughters. Yeah, over the years in uh, Cuba Pedi, living here, I've been very active in any work you can think of. Helping uh, doctors, translating a little bit there. So many people who need a bit of a help. Here and there, in the community generally, very much involved. I'm still involved.